Throughout civilization, people have relied on bridges. We've moved from logs over streams to viaducts that seem to stretch forever. From natural stone arches to the great Roman aqueducts, to graceful spans that leap across space. From primitive rope bridges to our favorite city landmarks. They continue to stretch the limits of technology and imagination. Today, our way of life depends on bridges. In the United States alone, we make at least three billion bridge crossings on any given day. That's around 12 crossings per person. We tend to take this for granted until one of our economic lifelines fails. It was rush hour on October 17, 1989. The Loma Prieta earthquake stopped the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Area in its tracks. The earthquake measured 7.1 on the Richter scale. Several bolts on the upper deck of the Bay Bridge simply could not support the enormous force. Within a month of the collapse, engineers at California's Department of Transportation were able to patch this crucial lifeline between San Francisco and Oakland. But years later, they are still dealing with the problems the disaster created. This is not an easy bridge to fix. In the first place, it was not an easy bridge to build. Ever since the gold rush, people dreamed of a link between San Francisco and Oakland. But the distance, depth of water, and soft soil posed enormous problems. We consider a lot of different things in choosing different bridge types. First of all, the span length. What do you have to cross? The second would be, what's underneath, what's supporting it? Is there good material? Can you, do you have the strength to support long spans? Uh, the third, though, is really, uh, really not inside the design realm. It has to do with access. What can the contractor bring to bear? Can he get cranes to the site? Because that will dictate, often, the type of bridge. Engineers also consider what a bridge has to handle, the traffic, mother nature, and the weight of the structure itself. Somehow, a bridge must transfer these loads to the ground, and it does so by the constant pushing and pulling on each of its parts. On a beam bridge, weight pressing down on it creates compression along the top and tension along the bottom, transferring the loads to each pier. An arch bridge operates totally in compression, pushing the weight out from the center and down to each end. The ends push the arch together and keep it from spreading apart. You've got to have very uh, solid foundations because if once a, a foundation were to slide or to give, that compression would go away and the bridge would no longer stand. So it's a good uh, type of bridge when you have great soils, great stiff rock uh, to embed in it. A suspension bridge really follows its name. It suspends the load from main cables. Those loads are picked up through the cable and then placed vertically down on the towers. But that only can happen if the cable is fixed at its end, so they develop large cable anchorages. As incredible as it seems, all of the bridges we cross have evolved from these three designs.